Hi, I'm Ikea, and for today's video, we're going to continue on our ramblizations on the subject of Cheska versus Grupo, a subject I introduced in the previous video. We didn't get to it because I uh, went very long on the third weapon stats video on the third weapon stats, and we're spinning this off into its own video just to uh, give it its, its time. I've expanded upon the spreadsheet as it stood uh, the previous time and uh, made it uh, much more in-depth. And the subject of Cheska versus Grupo, I feel, is one that I feel should be very easy, uh, but I also <laughs> see it go wrong so often. As uh, so many people, especially in Elmo Strikers, will recommend Grupo over Cheska, which to me in uh, for Elmo is definitely the wrong choice. And uh, in... Uh, Oreo as well. There is actually a case to be made in certain situations for Cheska, but for general play, Grupo becomes the choice there. And we'll kind of go over what causes that, what uh, what makes it actually to me a, a very simple subject, but one that we need to expand on on, uh, on numbers quite a bit. And that does, of course, as well. This is going to be another spreadsheet video, uh, a subject I enjoy very much, but uh, <laughs> just to give the warning there. And uh, yeah, we're going to go over Strikers Elmo, and we're going to go over Oreo Elmo, and uh, the layouts we choose for them. And uh, yeah, let's uh, jump right in. And basically, indeed, the choice in question is um, what do we put next to the Coyote? Because I should very much say that, as the Coyote is our first pick, uh, not much can beat the Coyote, except way too many Coyotes. Um, when there are way too many Coyotes, and uh, to me, honestly, too, way too many Coyotes starts at um, more than three, so at four. If you're the fourth one that has it, uh, then I usually reconsider or consider a different piece here. In a group play, that can happen, but likely won't. Um, solo, of course, it definitely won't. And uh, you really only start hitting it regularly in countdown and in raids where eight man content uh, becomes a norm and of course for instance in incursion you might make specific choices of having only one coyote mostly because uh, the multiple ranges are not really reliably uh, <laughs> gettable you're mostly in just one range so having one coyote there but there of course we're going into coordinated teams for instance, as well, for the legendary, very coordinated teams might have very coordinated ways of very coordinatedly getting specifically the buffs that they want to coordinate together. And uh, yeah, that that is, of course, not what we're discussing here. I'm talking about general play and to come to specify what I mean by that, because that's, of course, quite different per person, is a player that oftentimes plays solo, Oftentimes, match makes into countdowns, into groups for missions, uh, maybe is in a clan and sometimes plays together with them, and does maybe, uh, in the rare cases, although I consider that outside of general, incursions and raid. Um, and yeah, if, you, if that kind of fits the bill, then this is kind of for you. But of course, we're mostly going to discuss numbers here. And uh, for that, of course, as always, um, me being me, we're going to discuss them with some spreadsheets and some multi-calculators. Uh, let's jump into this one. And of course, this spreadsheet will be linked down below. It is a continuation of the damage to, uh, or um, the third stats <laughs> uh, uh, spreadsheet, the damage to target side of cover spreadsheet, as I almost uh, Freudianly slipped out there. Um, it is uh, scrolling down a little bit, and these are, of course, multi-calculators of my design. They are designed to calculate up to 10 builds up to each, uh, against each other. Input happens down here, output happens up here. Well, we're mostly getting out a burst and a sustained DPS number, although both of them will match here because we aren't doing anything to the builds that will alter their burst or their sustain. We're not comparing between weapons or anything. So both of the uh, numbers will percentually be the same difference. So we'll just mostly be looking at burst, and we're also getting out a uh, weapon hit number for body and uh, and uh, body crit and headshot and headshot plus body uh, plus crit, and that's um, to compare against in the range just to make sure we've input everything correctly. As well, these red numbers uh, or these uh, red parts at the end uh, signify the coyote being active, as of course we're picking coyote first. 
uh, when there is nothing, that means no coyote is active. And while that is actually, of course, a technical impossibility, um, from the first shot that you take, a coyote buff will become active. And from that point, uh, a coyote buff will be active for the rest of your play session. Uh, just for the sake of uh, argument, <laughs> we're, we're picking that. So let's jump into the first one. And that is purely Cheska versus Grupo. No coyotes active. Uh, just to illustrate the, uh, the starting point of it, uh, as well, we have the option here to turn on headshots and turn them off. Actually, let's turn them off to begin with, uh, just to start there. As that's usually how I start comparing numbers, and then I will uh, put in headshots. As Of course, this that shifts the balance between things, because headshot is going to be additive to crit damage pool. Now, at the pure state, <laughs> without coyotes and such active, uh, going just layout-wise, setting up the build for Grupo or setting it up for Cheska, uh, the difference between them is um, close to three, uh, three quarters of a percent, uh, seven point uh, four zero point seven four percent. Now, of course, that's less than a percentage point. That's not a lot. <laughs> uh, there is no humongous difference here. But if you were to um, pick one of these, why would you pick the lower number? Uh, and that's the crux of this, because a lot of people go that, um, well, recommend Grupo, and um, two, uh, and they'll say, um, I have enough crit chance already. To get enough crit chance, even for the Elmo, you need two crit chance mods uh, on the build. And that is the crux of why Cheska beats out Grupo, is that Cheska, of course, with its brand bonus, is providing 10 crit chance. Now, if you have to make up for that crit chance, your option is to put in uh, two crit chance mods, which you were doing here, that means you're losing out on 24 crit damage. Of course, Grupo then makes up 15 of those um, with, with its crit damage. But actually, we see that the, that the Grupo version has two more crit chance and less crit damage. And it uh, doesn't have enough gain in its crit chance to make up for the loss in crit damage. And that's what we see here as well. Uh, it is behind. And while you, if you have a Grupo chest and you're like, I'm okay losing this and I'll take it. If you're recommending it to others, it is important to just, because it doesn't matter if they're setting their <laughs> target to Cheska or Grupo and going out and farming uh, that, that uh, type of chest. So just recommend them the right thing, which is Cheska. Grupo is just a pure loss and it actually gets worse once we start getting in the Coyotes. Now, uh, if we go into the Coyote 15 to 25, which is my... Uh, what I would consider the most active range for the Elmo. We have that on percentage-wise. Actually, I should first explain. We have two options, of course, for the Grupo. We can set it up as 54, which is um, with two crit chance mod, or we can put it at 48 and then um, have it be with one crit chance mod. Um, both of them are viable choices, and that comes up here, especially as uh, in the 15 to 25 range, the group of 48 actually um, is keeping up with the Cheska almost. It's a percentage point behind. The difference got bigger <laughs> because, of course, the Coyotes came in. But actually, the group of 54, of course, has less of a hole uh, left open for the Coyote to fill in. And that means that it's actually falling behind further, dropping to uh, two and a half percentage points behind. And uh, this is uh, quite a big loss. Now, we have, of course, as well, that sometimes you will land in the 0 to 15 meters range. You'll rush someone then, or you'll get rushed down by someone. Uh, the thing is then, the 54 um, actually starts winning at that point, um, being only half of a percentage of, uh, well, a little less than half a percent behind the Cheska. And the group of 48 is now falling further away because it, of course, is in a less optimal crit chance crit damage because it's 48 of uh, it's it's a much bigger crit damage number and not enough crit chance to really make better use of it than of course at 54, and and now it's falling behind and that's kind of the thing in both and and as well in both of them um, very much so the Grupo in all of its layouts is losing out. If even in one of these layouts it won out in some way, one could make a case for it. Um, but you very much can't, I feel. Uh, Cheska is just beating it out uh, in every way. And that's going to be the case with Elmos. Uh, in some other weapon types, in some other places, you might have choices like this. But especially with the Elmo Strikers, I feel, why would you, why would you recommend anything other <laughs> than Cheska? If we put turn on the headshot number and do it at its full value of 75, 
We have then that uh, this is, of course, implying 100% headshot rate, which, of course, doesn't happen <laughs> really. Um, the group of 54 in, in the, in the mid-range uh, or in the short range and the group of 48 in the short range actually catch up a little bit. Actually, I haven't uh, made the input yet there, but uh, now we see yeah, <laughs> they've caught up a little bit more. Unless, of course, that is diminishing the effectiveness of this pool because this pool has now become larger because of the headshot feeding into the crit damage. That means that actually in effect on the build, all of these other multipliers are multiplying against this larger pool. And that means that they are now becoming more important. The larger a pool is, that pool doesn't actually gain in in importance. What ma ha what matters is then because it's mul it's getting multiplied by other pools, um, and that is the case here as we see as well. So we're kind of decreasing the effectiveness of of um, crit damage in effect in percentages, not not in, in 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 absolute numbers, but in percentages between the builds. So the crit damage is having less of an effect here. But of course, what we can do as well is put this headshot to a more realistic number. And I see a lot of people just doing percentages for these. What you can do as well is just input the number as it would be <laughs> at that percentage. So here, if we put headshot as 7.5%, we're kind of saying we're headshotting 10% of the time now. And that is, a, I feel, quite a realistic number for general play, especially for instance, if you're countdowning and stuff. Um, and yeah, in, in no way does the Grupo ever really win. And it's, it's always really a loss. So you add, if you're setting it up at a 48, you're kind of losing. If you're setting it up at a 54, you're losing at the mid range with a, with a 48, you're losing at the close range. Let's move on now to, um, what if both buffs are active and what we see when both buffs are active. So in this case, we're doing a zero uh, to 15 plus 15 to 25. Um, the Cheska still wins out uh, outright. The group of 48 uh, catches up a little, and the 54 kind of you know lingers <laughs> behind uh, the Cheska uh, quite a bit. So if you're going group or set it up as a 48 in general, um, because sometimes this will be active. And as well, actually, if the if we uh, take for instance this 58 and make this a 60. Uh, uh, implying that also the other buff is active, um, the long range buff. We do see that Grupo, in that case, barely wins out. But the thing is, of course, the long range buff, while sometimes active, is you like the activeness of this is tiny in comparison to just Cheska being always there. So while you can set it up with that 60 and having, you know, an extra two uh, crit chance hole for the long range buff, when it's not active, you're a percentage point behind. So most of the time, you're a percentage point behind. And then once in a while, you're uh, almost a percentage point ahead. And this percentage point ahead is definitely not more than a 50% of the time. So set it up with a Cheska because as well, um, quite, long, quite a lot of times, there's only really one buff active anyway. Now, does this mean that... Um, Grupo is always worse than Cheska? No, because we'll go, of course, into uh, future <laughs> calculations here with the Oreo, as I, as I uh, uh, highlighted uh, in the intro as well. And there, of course, things change. But we have still one thing to discuss uh, when it comes to the Elmo, and that is that we have, of course, a choice sometimes to leave out the Coyote, because there is absolutely times when um, there are already too many Coyotes around um, and in those cases, for instance, especially in Countdown, you will encounter this a lot. You can make the choice to grab, instead of you having the Coyote as well, um, to leave it out, a benefit from other people's buff, and uh, then you get either to grab, for instance, a Grupo or a Fenris. Now, one thing about the Fenris here as well, and Sokolov in a minute, as we'll go into the Oreo, is that, of course, it only will apply to the AR, and especially on a... Uh, gear set like uh, strikers i'll be using making use of uh, both weapon systems and grupo will apply to both weapon systems and well, pistols as well but the fenris of course would only apply to the ar um, in these cases it is important uh, to um, make note of um, what weapon systems you're kind of using if you're maining an ar um, and fenris is ahead by a lot um, or a significant amount to make it work well, then I would pick Fenris. If Fenris is, a, is ahead, but not by a lot, 
I might, and I will <laughs> actually grab Grupo and then um, make sure that it's applying to all of the weapons that I'm using. And actually, if we jump into the numbers, we see that that is kind of the case, especially with the full red strikers as we have it here. Um, of course, the balance of this shifts on weapon damage and crit damage that you have, and as well, of course, on talents. Now, of course, here we're using the, uh, Elmo. It is a set talent. We don't get to change it. If you're comparing, for instance, um, on, uh, first of all, if you have blue cores, for instance, the balance shifts more and more towards Fenris. If you have, as well, for instance, Strained as your main weapon talent, you'll be feeding into the pool of crit damage, so then actually Fenris again wins. But inversely, for instance, if you're using Optimist, then that's feeding into Fenris's pool, so now Grupo would uh, be the preferred choice um, if it is around the same numbers. Now, what we have here is that exact thing. It is around the same numbers. Um, Fenris is winning by uh, a quarter of a percent, 0.22%. Uh, and that is not enough for me, in this case, um, for me to pick Fenris over Grupo. If we turn on Headshot, of course, the balance will shift uh, because that will be uh, interacting with our uh, crit damage. It is additive to our crit damage. It, isn't, uh, it is then multiplying against weapon damage, so it isn't really doing anything uh, to diminish the returns from uh, weapon damage. Uh, the balance shifts now. It is now 1.25%. Uh, and um, that is kind of, yeah, at that point, if this was the full number, I might be considering between the two, especially if I was using maining the uh, Elmo more. Now, of course, with a 100 stack um, striker, I could really main the Elmo. Um, and a, a lot of people very much do. But let's put this again to that 7.5%, implying a 10% headshot rate. Um, what we have then is, yeah, they're pretty close to each other, of course, because we've shifted the balance back. And yeah, this number is what I would kind of consider. And again, depending on talents as well, of course. Now here, the Elmo's talent and also what I have on the ACS, both of them will not um, really matter here. And that's why I pick Grupo alongside of my Cheska. Uh, of note here as well is what uh, what is the difference between us... Uh, having a coyote, so basically the number here uh, on top, versus having a Grupo instead and getting the coyote buffs from someone or someone else, we'll get we're getting the same coyote buffs basically. We are gaining uh, a little over eight percent on both, and of course we're gaining more actually on the Fenris uh, in percentage wise because yeah, it, it coyote is feeding into the uh, uh, crit damage pool. Now this eight percent is well worth it. I'm quite often myself uh, too lazy as well to check <laughs> if uh, too many people are or aren't running Coyotes and uh, make this choice. But um, seeing this number, I'm, I'm, I will keep an eye out more. Uh, 8%, uh, of course, is a lot. We already do this in coordinated teams, especially in incursion teams that uh, when I run with, with them will... Uh, usually have one coyote in there. We'll discuss incursion as a as a subject as a whole at the towards the end because of course it's a it's a relevant subject, especially as well with the Oreo. Um, one uh, next one that we have here is with grading at twenty, and then of course grading feeds into the weapon damage pool, meaning that is decreasing the effectiveness of Fenris. So actually, if you have a grade twenty uh, Elmo the effectiveness of Fenris now becomes basically the exact same as Grupo. And this is, again, with those, uh, with those uh, both the short-range and the mid-range buff from Coyote. Um, and yeah, that is, at that point, I would definitely pick Grupo because it just applies to both weapon systems. Uh, and this is with that same 7.5 headshot. Uh, headshot. Um, here we're uh, comparing the, this number versus the previous one where we had... Uh, no grading active. So basically the increase from getting grading 20. And that is that same 8%. Now, of course, we'll have grade 25 likely available next season, which is you know, a month and a half away, two months <laughs> at the most, hopefully, uh, away from us. Um, that, of course, increases this uh, difference even more. And then actually Fenris will start to lose. But grade 20 for now, especially, is is very very common to put on an Elmo, on an Oreo, and uh, weapons uh, that are well liked. 
So this is actually a, a relevant number here as well. Uh, and yeah, Fenris at this point then becomes a secondary choice. Why why would I pick Fenris and only apply it to my um, to my uh, Elmo when I could have Grupo, which is basically outputting the same amount and uh, applying both to my Elmo and also my ACS. Now, having discussed uh, Elmo in depth, let's move on uh, to our uh, next subject, uh, and that is, of course, the Oreo. Let's introduce the build first. And that build looks like this, as a, is also on my build collection like this with uh, Grupo pieces. And uh, we're laying it out now with Grupo because we have one fundamental change, and that is the weapon system, uh, who is providing us with a plus 21 crit chance as a second stat, and then also a plus 10 crit chance as, as a mod. Meaning that against the Elmo we had a minute before, it, that was only a plus 20 crit chance from one mod, meaning we have 11 crit chance more on the Oreo, and that changes the balance of things. Of course, crit chance caps at 60, so we don't want to go way over. In this build as well, in this layout, we only have crit damage rolls, uh, uh, well, on every piece, and of course the pieces that have to have crit chance alongside of them have crit chance there, but um, we don't really have the option anywhere to flip a crit damage to a crit chance. Uh, on top of anywhere that we have, um, or well, crit chances to crit damage, to <laughs> lose even more crit uh, chance uh, is what I'm intending to say. Meaning this build lands on 53.178 with the Grupo. If we jump into its numbers, uh, the initial one again is without the Coyote uh, active at all. And what we see there is actually Cheska is winning out by a tiny amount without a Coyote active, of course. So this would be not possible, but of course, actually as well, the 0 to 15 Coyote buff would, um, yeah, only um, uh, would apply to crit damage, where the mid-range buff, of course, would also apply crit chance. And that is the reason for this choice. Here, the Cheska is ahead, mostly because, again, it's, while well, even while it's going over 60 and is going to 63, wasting three crit chance, it is still making up uh, more than enough to beat out Grupo without a Coyote buff active. But what I'm uh, setting the build up as is, as I said, for like a general player. And uh, that comes into play a little bit later on because first off in the zero to 15 range, which actually would be the preferred range, of course, for the Oreo, um, the Oreo um, with the Grupo as set up as is, actually loses out by even more against the Cheska. So it may be surprising why I'm picking the Cheska if you've seen these two numbers. And as well, there's another number, of course, here that is the Sokolov, because we could also go with Sokolov here as well. Especially in the Strikers uh, variant, um, it is much more viable to as well go Sokolov because you can actually stack up with uh, the Oreo. Uh, the reason I would still pick Grupo, and I still do over Sokolov, even in this case, um, as it's losing out to it, is that split weapon system again. And in this case, it's not because I'm I'm wanting to stack with the ACS. It's that I'll uh, run out of ammo quite often on the Oreo because it eats ammo as if it's free um, and uh, as if it grows on trees. <laughs> Um, and uh, runs out uh, to the point that uh, we've taken uh, uh, we've taken to calling it um, when you run out of ammo. I have Oreo to myself. Uh, that's how uh, ubiquitous that uh, that trait of it is of running out of ammo. So I'll be using the ACS uh, from time to time, and uh, this um, uh, point at thirty five percent is not applying. When I'm using the ACS, it will be actually quite a loss on the ACS. So I'm setting myself up with a Grupo just to have the chance to use multiple weapon systems. Although here well, as well, the if we put our headshots to 70, which is what the Oreo uh, platform will have with a full watch, um, it does fall behind even more. And actually the difference between Sokolov and Cheska uh, catches up between them, of course, because now headshot is applying again, uh, is uh, adversely applying basically. It's increasing. Uh, the, the Cheska and the Grupo less uh, than it is the Sokolov. So the Sokolov here, especially if you're headshotting a lot, would seem like a decent choice. Um, if we put this again actually onto uh, zero, 
and go to the final numbers. And the final numbers is kind of why I do pick <laughs> Grupo, is that um, if we uh, take the mid-range buff, which should not be your main play area, but you end up in mid-range, just at the edge of it, uh, quite a bit. Uh, 15 to 20 is actually a range I see a lot, <laughs> even when trying to, for me, play very aggressively and play short range. I still see 15 to 20 meters um, quite a lot in my gameplay. So this is the reason why we're picking, uh, why I'm picking the Grupo, because in this case, the Grupo wins. And to me, it doesn't lose out enough in the other ones for it to make sense to go um, Sokolov, uh, for instance, and as well Cheska. Because in this case, of course, Cheska doesn't have a hole open for that 10 crit chance of the Coyote to fill up. Uh, meaning that um, where on the short range it is losing by a lot versus Cheska, it is actually now winning by a lot versus Cheska. And as well, I play in groups a lot, and I'm expecting as well um, a large part of the community to be kind of like that and matchmaking and such. We'll set this uh, to 10% activeness on the headshot now, and um, we'll take these to be our final view of these numbers, kind of. And we have that, yeah, Sokolov is kind of matching up with Grupo, uh, but I'll be still picking Grupo because of its, um, uh, of its applying to both weapon systems. And versus Cheska, we're only really losing out when we're uh, on the 0 to 15 meters. But that is, of course, a very relevant range for the Oreo. That is its optimal range as well, as it ends at 15 meters. But let's move on to this next one, and that'll maybe make it a little bit clearer why I do pick Grupo. And that is, if we scroll down here, we have the same three again. Uh, we have it here with the Coyote at uh, having a two Coyote buffs active, 0 to 15 and 15 to 25, which will happen quite a lot, I feel, especially in group play, um, as there are also, for instance, a lot of uh, Elmos and such still in play and Pamasas in play. And uh, depending on your group composition, someone might be running that. Or even if there are multiple Oreos in a team, uh, sometimes sometimes people are just a little bit out of range and you just start shooting anyway. Because, you know, at the 20 meter range, you can definitely start shooting an Oreo. Um, here we see between the three, the Cheska now loses out. And this is kind of my reason for going with Grupo. Quite... I. I would say I have around a 25% of playtime, uh, even solo, where it will be 15 to 20 meters, not per se to 25, but to, to 20 meters. Um, that is catching up. And then especially when I'm in group, uh, yeah, you're very likely to have multiple Coyotes active, uh, having the short and the mid-range buff uh, coming off of uh, you and others. And at this point, I would definitely pick Grupo over uh, Cheska. Sokolov, of course, here still wins out um, by a small margin. If we actually bump up the headshot again, of course, just to uh, take it to uh, the worst case scenario, basically for the Grupos versus the, the Sokolovs, it is 1% ahead. And that 1% ahead, while, while a decent number, is not enough for me to give up the damage bonus applying to both weapon systems. So here I'm picking Grupo over Sokolov. But especially if you're maining the, the Oreo more than me, for instance, or more than I would consider as general, um, Sokolov is definitely a choice. Although we have to first uh, and lastly for this section, uh, for between these three, discuss one last one. We'll put Headshot back down to zero. Um, and that is um, Grupo, uh, Jessica, and Sokolov. Same uh, uh, Coyote buffs, but now we've added in grade uh, 20 to the Elmo, uh, to the Oreo, uh, which is a really relevant thing as well, because of course uh, the Oreo is a very effective weapon. And because of that, it is likely to be graded <laughs> to the highest that uh, that player has available to them. 20 is very normal. I see a lot of them already at 20. Um, and uh, of course, even likely again next season, it will likely go to 25. And uh, we see there, especially because of course now grading is feeding into weapon damage. Weapon damage is getting uh, decreased in its in, in its um, effectiveness. Uh, each point is giving less and less returns, and we see that here as well. Sokolov is now losing out to uh, Grupo, and of course here I would definitely pick Grupo. 
if we put headshot back to full back to its full 70 um there of course sokolov now edges back out again because of course now we've <laughs> we've diminished the effectiveness of another pool and then uh, sokolov is catching up uh, because it's not being affected by that change if we set this to seven uh, a general 10 percent um, they basically line up at the same number and at this point is basically why i do choose grupo because my oreos uh, i do have graded 20 oreo in my stash on, on uh, my alts as well i have, I have them uh, pretty high um and i can go and grab that and uh, really dish out uh very big numbers even with uh, a little bit of a headshot uh having discussed all of these options we have left out of course uh somewhat of an elephant in the room uh, and that elephant uh, is uh, wearing a contractor's and a fox's prayer <laughs> uh, that is, that is, I, I just had that imagery in my head now <laughs> that, that actually looks funny um, uh, but yeah let's uh, compare grupo to contractors and fox and um, we're only keeping grupo here because as i wrote in my previous one it is my general choice um, we have also set uh, here grading to 20, so yeah, it would definitely be my general choice. What we need to do for uh, contractors is actually um, have both a number with and without DTA active, and for Fox Despair, uh, with and without DTOC active. Although, of course, we could do the same thing we do to Headshot, because here we have Headshot at 20% activeness, just to pick a general number that kind of works, and uh, we'll set it up to 70 in a second as well. I'm doing kind of the same with DTA and DTOC, but I'm doing it in a different way. We're having both the number active and inactive, um, and then we're averaging out to a percentage. So this uh, combined number is basically taking uh, the 60% of, uh, of uh, DTA active and 40% remaining then of DTA inactive and combining them into uh, one burst number and then comparing that to the Grupo. Um, and doing the same for the Fox's Prayer, and those inputs are happening here. Now, of course, for it, we could also do the same as we're doing for Headshot, just, you know, if we're going with 50% uh, DTA active, um, I would set this number to 8. We could just have uh, it be in one row. The reason I am splitting it out is that I want to have these checking numbers. These checking numbers would not line up if, uh, if you know, <laughs> if we did that, if we averaged it out, especially as well with a headshot like this, it would not... Uh, you know, uh, match out because you're either headshotting or you're not. Basically, uh, you're not uh, averaging out with the with the damage hits in the game. So that's the reason why we're doing it like this. A little bit more complex, but uh, as well showing both the numbers active, so we can kind of infer some things. Uh, these ones that are grayed out are the DTA and non-DTA number, and then the DTOC and non-DTOC number. Mostly because we'll be comparing the combined numbers. Of course, that's the ones we care about. So just to keep the eye a little bit off of them and make it a little bit more legible we have it like this now we have of course when dta is active we have detox on the weapon uh, dta then uh, from contractors and uh, a combined amount when fox's prayer is of course active it is uh, that amount as well one thing i would say here as well is the reason why we quite often see contractors uh, alongside of oreos is of course this is an existing pool fox's prayer uh, is feeding into detox that we'll have on the weapon because of course we'll pick <laughs> detox there uh, and dta isn't so if for the same activeness uh, dta would definitely win out but we see actually in the combined numbers that that is not the case we have set dta to 60 percent which is what i consider you know around uh, yeah, uh, is my guess, basically, for general play. Uh, this, to me, um, will be lower than this uh, if playing solo. It will be higher than this uh, in, if playing in groups, generally. And it will be much higher than this for, for instance, Incursion or Heroic Countdowns, where everything's elite and everything has a humongous armor bars, uh, especially, for instance, in Incursion bosses. Uh, Detox as well is very reliant on basically what you pick. If you're solo, it will likely be lower than 90%. Uh, my guesstimate is this 90% for general play. If you're standing next to a fire eclipse uh, that uh, bears the name IKEA, uh, likely everything's on fire and you have 100%. Uh, so it's very dependent on gameplay and content as well. And content especially as well, because for instance, uh, in incursion in raid um, the bosses aren't taking cover much <laughs> so 
this might be higher. So it is very, these two are very much your pick. Same for the headshot kind of, that's why we're uh, playing around with them. Now, finally discussing all of that, we come to Grupo. We have Grupo at the top here. And of course we have uh, the Coyote at zero to 15. We'll go in a second into uh, having the Coyote be at uh, 15 to 25 uh, or, or um, both uh, zero to 15 and 15 to 25. Um, here, uh, we're actually not laid up correctly for that because we could as well have a one more crit chance mod, of course, that would apply to all of these as, um, of course, for the uh, contractors and for the Fox Spur, you will have likely one less, uh, well, you're giving up a slot that you could have crit chance in uh, to have that uh, bonus stat. And uh, that's kind of their, the why they... Um, uh, uh, aren't as great in strikers build as they are in for instance high end rits where you have way too much crit chance already <laughs> to play around with uh, especially if you're putting oreos or elmos into them now uh, with this case we see that when we actually have dta active or detox active our numbers are bigger and uh, that's, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> something that a lot of people just look at this number. They'll go, uh, detox active is just higher. And okay, so I'll just go with that. What you kind of need to do is this, average them out. Then we see that um, uh, detox um, does with its 60% activeness, uh, uh, loses out both to Grupo and to Fox. And that's because of this 60% activeness, because of course, uh, Actually, the if they both were at 100%, which we can do here as well, or actually, well, we can just compare this number to this number, uh, we see that the detox actually loses out to contractors when both are active or, or like at, <laughs> at the active state for each of them. And that's because, of course, DTA is feeding 8 into a separate multiplier, and uh, Fox's prayer is feeding 8 into a pool that already has 10 in it. So it is effectively doing a 7.7% and, uh, and some digits after it uh, increase. And in their combined values, though, we're considering DTOC much more active than DTA. And um, in gameplay, I would definitely say that is the case for most, uh, most things. And uh, yeah, then, and this combined rate is why I pick Grupo. Uh, even when I put it into, um, you know, uh, if we are using a chest striker, because especially, of course, if we're using uh, an obliterate chest, we kind of have to go either uh, one of the brand sets. Uh, if we're going a different slot, if we have the uh, chest of strikers on us, um, then we can pick something else. That's where contractors and stuff come in. That's also why we're just comparing them at 200 stacks. And uh, Grupo would win out for me, especially uh, in general play, against uh, contractors and uh, and uh, and fox prayer now if we move it on actually to this uh, second one and what this uh, second one does is we have taken out the exact same numbers as we had before uh, we're just adding in uh, another coyote buff we don't only have the 0 to 15 active we also have the 15 to 25 active with the same activenesses for both DTA and DTOC and that same around 20% headshot here. Uh, and what that uh, means here is actually uh, Grupo is pulling further ahead. The number differences is actually larger between, um, between uh, Grupo and the contractors and Grupo and Fox. Um, and that is because of course now we are getting that mid-range buff, our, um, we all of them had a hole, the same uh, 3% uh, available, or uh, 6%, 7%. <laughs> they were at 53, that 7% available for the mid-range Cody buff to fill up with its, with its plus 10. But now we're getting much more effectiveness out of that higher crit damage number that, Coyo uh, that um, uh, Grupo has over um, together with those Coyotes uh, over Contractors and Fox. And we see that uh, sh shown here as well. Now, of course, it's not the, the biggest loss, uh, it's a little bit over 3% um, uh, for uh, the contractors if you take 60% as your activeness. And for the Fox Spur at 90% activeness, it's a uh, uh, percentage and a half, less than a little bit. And uh, those aren't humongous losses, but again, in the same way as Jessica versus Grupo, they are all, all pretty close to each other. But there is, in general play, I would definitely 
I'm definitely picking Grupo, and I have, <laughs> as you can see, my build collection. And um, while, for instance, Fox's Prayer uh, and Boat's Contractors, when they're active, they're a little bit more damage. And especially in this case, when we're accounting for two Coyotes, it's barely more damage <laughs> when they're active. They just lose out um, a lot when it's inactive. In the case of the Contractors, it's um, a little under 7%. In the, in the case of um, the um, Fox's Prayer, and of course, as well, the targets out of cover, uh, the damage targets out of cover from the weapon also becomes inactive when the targets are in cover. Uh, that means that uh, it's dropping a here 15%, a little over 15%. And that makes that average. Even at this high 90%, it means it loses out. And uh, yeah, because you're also then wasting that brand bonus slot. Now, of course, if we were to run it with either a um, rifle or a contractors with a with an LMG or Fox with a rifle, but we don't really do that. We're maining the Oreo here. We're secondarying uh, an, uh, an ACS. The main bonuses won't apply to them, and uh, that quite often happens, especially in striker. Now, in high ends, of course, that's, that balance is very different, and there you can very much make use of foxes and contractors, and that's why they were best in slot for a long time. Uh, they no longer really are because of Cheska's um, or uh, Striker's uh, affinity for uh, crit chance. Um, although, of course, now um, uh, Grupo does kind of compete because these numbers are even from further apart for Elmo because uh, there you definitely need the Cheska to fill up uh, the crit chance needed. Uh, let's discuss uh, one last uh, part, which is uh, a different spreadsheet, which is uh, all about incursion, because it is a different beast. And that one is this second spreadsheet that is linked down below as well. This is um, one we put together on stream, uh, one for the incursions. Um, we'll be discussing the fourth multi-calculator here, so you'll have to scroll down a little bit. It's also not pretty up for a video as uh, some of the others have been. Um, but just quickly, I wanted to go through this because, of course, Incursion is its own separate beast and we need to kind of, well, very specific situation. And this is very specifically then made for that because, of course, the things I discussed here before are actually mostly general choices. And uh, the reason incursion is quite different is, firstly, we're expecting a very high headshot number. We're just putting headshot on and just uh, having it on. We also have 15 detox here, <laughs> kind of as base. Uh, that's because we're expecting the healer. We'll be running three DPSs and one healer uh, for the right fight for the lovebirds, uh, for the two big fights, really. Um, and there, the healer is likely to run Demolitionist, and they'll provide us with this five detox that'll go through all of them. Uh, that also means that, for instance, we're considering Detox to be active at 95% because barely anything really takes cover <laughs> in there. You might have a, you might have a Assaulter or a, or a Sniper, especially during the right fight, just after they spawn, kind of take cover and you'll have to deal with them in cover, but most of the things aren't in cover. Also, DTA has a very high activeness. A lot of things that outside of the incursions wouldn't be counted as DTA. Uh, actually are within the incursion and uh, that only really leaves the health bars underneath uh, the, the bosses uh, and uh, elites um, uh, armor bars that uh, are uh, DT, uh, DTH damage to health and meaning that DTA is inactive so contractors will become inactive at that point. So we're putting this at a 90% rate. All of that together means that uh, the balance shifts. So as well, we're setting up the build to be with 59 crit chance. So we're putting in one extra crit chance mod. So it's going to uh, have two, well, uh, two crit chance rolls for, or mods for the contractors and the fox and one crit chance mod for the grupo. Uh, and there we see that the numbers, especially for instance, for the contractors when it's active, um, is quite higher than the Grupo because the balance has completely been shifted in, in ways. And this uh, DTA number, of course, we're taking at 90% activeness and this one at 10% uh, of inactiveness together, combining them together, and we get this 101% for the contractors. And yeah, this is the reason why usually you will see contractors being used as well for especially incursion. Just this number is higher than this number uh, by a percentage. And a percentage, while doesn't seem that much, 
um, why wouldn't you have this? This might be the difference between if all three players have this instead of this, and all. Well, I mean, once once you're reaching these numbers and you have Oreos and stuff, you, you'll one phase. You're you'll get right through its phases each time. But if you're one of these players and then two, you know, carries uh, that might be running bad, there were worse builds and stuff. This might be the difference between you know leaving right on a tiny sliver and getting through uh, to the next phase. Um, and damage is just important. And again, here, uh, there is no game active gameplay difference between them. We're not changing talents or such or weapon types. So these two kind of play the same. And this one does a percentage more, uh, even like on its combined. And of course, on its, on its just pure damage output, it does close to 2% more. And uh, Fox's Prayer here, especially because we're even increasing our um, our DT uh, detox to be even higher uh, because of that uh, demolitionist buff that we'll be getting, and of course we're having detox on the weapon. It means that yeah, it is going into a pool that is a little bit more filled in with even that five percent more activeness. It is actually falling behind. This is the reason you'll see contractors being used for incursions and not foxes as much. And um, of course, we also have the option of putting in Cheska and just going straight up to that uh, over that 60 and then uh, uh, going over the 60 and uh, having um, just a little less crit damage because we'll be swapping that. Um, and that actually uh, means in this case that the Cheska actually wins out against the Grupo. But we're already not really picking uh, between these two. We're really picking contractors. And um, with contractors, I would definitely pair it with Cheska because with contractors, you'll be using two crit chance mods. And really, as the the uh, a rule of thumb that we could make up here is if you're using two crit chance mods and you can flip them to be a Cheska brand, uh, you should do so. Uh, and we see that here as well. Putting contractors together with the Cheska for the two people not running uh, uh, Fox's Prayer is our setup that we use. And then uh, putting um, the for the person uh, running uh, contractors, uh, they will be have uh, two crit chance mods or two crit chance rolls on gear together with uh, having their coyote and then contractors. So yeah, contractors first and then uh one for, uh, one um, uh, coyote, and then for the other two people that aren't carrying the coyote, the Cheska piece alongside of the contractors. That's our setup that we use. Although I'm quite lazy, and I quite often still take Grupo in there, because uh, with this percentage point less, we'll still beat it uh, with a good team. <laughs> If you're, but if you're, of course, matchmaking and such, it's it's quite a difference. And then again, one thing I want to highlight: there are other choices as well. Because, uh, for instance, here we have a headshot striker, and we see that that headshot striker um, actually wins out. And of course, we do have the ability to headshot quite well uh, in the incursions, especially with booster hives going out and 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 the enemies being uh, us being able to be very close to right to the lovebirds uh, and just getting those headshots out. And uh, yeah, then you can have 8% more, for instance. But of course, that is a completely different build than what we're discussing here today. But just to, you know, show that there are even <laughs> when you're going very specific, you can even make much more specific choices. So yeah, let's uh, lead into the conclusion. And to conclude this long rambling video on the subject of Cheska versus Grupo and uh, when one fits and the other doesn't, um, yeah, I hope to have given you some insights into when to kind of pick Cheska over Grupo or Grupo over Cheska, as both are viable choices in different situations. <laughs> um, especially in the case of Elmo is kind of the reason I made this uh, uh, little video is, yeah, a lot of people I see um, going, uh, go uh, obliterate <laughs> Grupo Chess and, uh, oh, we have enough crit chance as is. Uh, no, you don't, <laughs> kind of is the answer to that. Um, and Cheska just wins out, especially on the, especially on the on the Elmo, on the Oreo, of course, as shown. Um, I pick Grupo as well, um, although in different situations with different um, content, as with incursions, um, we go with different things, and with those different things, we might go contractors and Cheska again because <laughs> now we've put in something where Cheska fits in per perfectly well once more. 
because that's the core of this. It's uh, how much crit chance, crit damage you have on your build and what kind of becomes the optimal choice between these two brands. Because it's really between the brand choice of 15 crit damage versus 15 crit chance. Um, and it's just a stats race. It's uh, whatever gives the best stats. Although, yeah, as to uh, signify again, <laughs> sometimes uh, the specific weapon damage ones uh, come in as well. As, yeah, here we are going for the group and the Cheska. We're using, as uh, well, we, we're not now, <laughs> but we were using strikers for most of it. But uh, here I put on, a, a, you know, a little bit of a joke, a three piece of each. And in Strikers, we'll be using both weapon systems, so uh, crit damage kind of wins out over a specific weapon damage. And of course, in specific situations, as we saw with Incursion, kind of Contractors wins out. So there are there is nuances to it. And on top of that as well, talents matter for that as well. Uh, Optimist feeds into weapon damage, uh, Strained feeds into... <laughs> uh, feeds into um, uh, uh, crit damage pools. Uh, even some of the headshot talents, of course, feed into the same pool that crit damage is kind of in. So the balance keeps shifting to and fro depending on your build and depending on how many coyotes are active in your team and, and stuff like that. Uh, in the end, it becomes always a, a calculation, um, which is what the game does as well, basically, in the background. It's, uh, it's all numbers all the way down, and uh, understanding those numbers can be quite useful. So yeah, I hope I've given you some more insights. In uh, a future video, we'll be going over an uh, update video kind of to the build collection where I've done quite a few changes <laughs> to builds on the build collection. And I kind of want to highlight those, but mostly as well, we'll go over why I made those changes, some on preference, but mostly as well going into the spreadsheets that uh, I usually put together to uh, compare damages uh, while on stream and uh, make informed decisions as best as I can. So I think that will be interesting of to sh not only show the changes, but to show why I made those changes. Uh, that will be followed up by a little uh, end of year thingy to give uh, a little bit of update on the channel and uh, kind of how it's going and how uh, how moving forward and and also over uh, some of my intentions for over on Twitch and uh, that will be followed up uh, by a build showcase and uh, I haven't specifically decided one yet but I have a few in mind so uh, it'll hopefully be a fun one so yeah as always thanks for joining me uh, and. Uh, Hope you learned something from this video and enjoyed it. As always, you can catch me as well over on Twitch. And we also have a community Discord nowadays uh, where I hang out and uh, we're building it up a little bit. We're mostly as well using it as our hub for uh, when we play together uh, either on or off stream. So yeah, uh, hope to see you once more in a future video. And as always, have a good night.